Moi dutifully served as vice president despite apparent tensions with other leaders in Kenyatta's inner circle. His friend Simeon Chai recalled how at one point the VP drafted a letter of resignation. Before submitting the letter, Moi called Nyachai who dropped everything and immediately traveled to Nakuru to see the VP and convinced him not to resign. Had Moi resigned or Nyachai not intervened that day, Kenya's history would have been drastically different. Even international banks with headquarters overseas were reported to dance to his tune. He would reportedly order them to fly money in any currency to any destination in Kenya. Sums of 5 million Kenya shillings would be flown from Nairobi to Mombasa, Narok, Eldoret, or Kisumu in 50 shillings denominations. A man or woman would be waiting to receive the cargo for distribution to waiting supporters. Biwat never carried any money on his person. Like everyone else, he grew his own food in school. During the holidays, he worked as a conductor for the Odhaya African Bus Union to earn some pocket money. Although Makto urged Kenyatta to join politics, the former nominated MP did not imagine he would be the sacrificial lamb in the high-stakes game. He had intimated to Kenyatta that his scheme was to entice a nominated MP from the coast region to cede his seat so Kenyatta would be nominated to parliament. However, Moi had his own plans. One evening in 2001, he called Tor and told him that he would be the one to give up his seat for Kenyatta. When asked about it by Kenyatta, Tor said Mze had arrived at a decision. Moi demonstrated his values and attributes through the way he related with members of his cabinet. For instance, those who arrived at his meeting late were shocked to be turned away with a warning that the meeting room was not a classroom. Moi would be in the office from 5 a.m. and could not understand why anyone would arrive for a cabinet meeting at 7.30 a.m. Ministers were also expected to have information about their ministries at their fingertips. There was no room for guesswork, especially since the president always had the information beforehand. Moi also towered above his ministers in the sense that he symbolized a higher vision for Kenya. No wonder that even his harshest critic, Jeremogi Oginga Odinga, would early in his life write that the man's vision was like that of a giraffe he sees far. This statement captured the essence of a man who in the 1960s and 70s exemplified such a laid-back and unambitious demeanor that he was dismissed as a passing cloud. The same passing cloud was to become Kenya's longest serving president who left an imprint on every facet of life, education, healthcare, the church, and even national infrastructure.